at Amberlane, we are developing some lines of whiskey that have virgin oak influence. They're not, they don't stay in virgin oak forever, but they certainly have a kickstart with some virgin oak in the cognac tradition. We have styles that are both French oak and American oak. Uh, the, I might just talk to a couple of our releases. So one is the Silk Road. Uh, I've seen that this morning. Yeah. I picked it up. That's a bit so, tough, uh, you grab the bottle. We're starting at a fairly high ABV. This is 58%. So this is a cask strength style. Okay. Um, but Silk Road was aged in virgin American oak and then moved into second or third fill ex-bourbon cask. And so if you were to consider its flavour profile, its aroma, it has a lot uh, in common with a bourbon uh, because of the virgin oak, American oak influence. Okay. Um, um, I'll pour it a measure. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the smell of happiness because mm-hmm. people, my people, the screw tops, there is no sound of happiness. Actually, there will mm. be sound of happiness. It'll be me dropping the shot. Um, <coughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's really smooth on the nose. Mm. So you have got a lovely gold medal. Um, at some of the awards, you do get actual gold medals. So this one won a gold medal at the San Francisco World Spirit Awards. Um, so to get a gold medal at these international competitions, it needs to receive a mark of over 90 out of 100. <clears throat> uh, and that is quite a difficult thing to achieve, uh, to get 90, more than 90 out of 100, because they're really looking for flaws in the whiskies as they try them and they're comparing hundreds of different expressions mm. um it is a very strong uh expression for us to start on but it does it did seem right to me that we would talk about it because of the virgin oak discussion that we're having um <clears throat> also it's named after a wonderful stretch of highway in um, central asia which, um... well indeed and and to give you the a bit of the history of that we um you know the silk road was the historic trade routes over which spices were one of the uh, luxury products that were um, conveyed, um, but also technology, for example, gunpowder, which I understand was developed first in China, yes. found its way west through the Silk Road. So um, we're taking a, a tradition of maturation of whiskey that really we've learnt from uh, a 400 year tradition from France, the cognac tradition, We've brought it all the way back to the central coast of New South Wales and we're applying it to the making of our whiskey. Um, and we're pretty happy with that. So so this one started in virgin oak, ended up in uh, in a very um, mature, rested bourbon cask. It's got, it's very lovely in mouthfeel and the spice of the virgin oak, but then sitting in an older bourbon cask for a number of years has produced what is an extraordinarily mellow, and silky expression for something that is 58%. Um, yeah, two things. <clears throat> I'm not really, I mean, there's the burn. There's no no doubt that this is um, a whiskey that will remove the windshield out of a Melbourne's day in, in the middle of July. <laughs> um, certainly remove my windshield and we don't have one today. Um, yeah. The other thing that should be noticed is that people, my people, this is recorded the day after a heat wave ended. It's been the uh, Labor Day weekend in Melbourne. Moomba's been cancelled because it was 39 degrees and they didn't want the kiddies dropping off the perch in heat stroke in the middle of Melbourne. So even now my office is a pretty warm event. Um, mm. I'm not really picking up. I mean, it's it's really whiskey. I mean, I said to someone today that the only way I could ever afford these whiskies that, you, that I'm drinking is because you've sent them to me. Um, mm-hmm because my kids keep on eating a lot. Yeah, they do that. Talk to me about what I'm tasting, because I'm, it's nice and silky. Yep. I'm tasting vanilla. Yes, um, so the traditional contributions from the, the virgin American oak are the vanilla. Um, there's lovely um, sort of caramel note that you should be picking up, and then there's a lot of those spices um, things like coriander and cumin, there's cinnamon, lo- lots mm. of lovely, sp- which is another reason why we came up with the, the name of, um, of the Silk Road. Um, but it's, um, you know, traditionally a bourbon, when we're taking 
in our Heaven Hill casks, the bourbons, they have a, a beautiful, uh, along with the vanilla, they have a lovely citrus note, uh, milk chocolate, and some floral notes. And so all of those things are present here um, with a very, very lovely spicy note from the Virgin American Oak. You drink it neat on the rocks. I don't think you'd be drinking any American champagne with this, that Coca-Cola shit. Or yeah, no, so, uh, very much I'm a, I'm a drink it neat or with a few drops of water. Um, for those that aren't used to drinking cask strength whiskey, definitely a few drops of water will make it more manageable for you. Um, but yeah, just a really lovely example of what you can do with some virgin American oak influence. We, you know, our commitment has always been to using the very best materials. So um, you can get a, a virgin American oak casks, which have been air dried or kiln dried. Um, air dried is superior, so it's aged outdoors, um, it, you know, um, exposed to the natural elements, whereas kiln dried, it's like a an artificial heating process, so it's yeah. it's not as reliable. Um, and then you can get it, um, the oak has been two years air dried or kiln dried or three years air dried or kiln dried. So we've always got three years air dried. It's a superior, a superior American oak. So the similarity is that if you dry your clothes out in the sunshine and that it's, or you dry them inside, you can end up dry clothes. But for me, being, <laughs> um, you know, I smell my sheets that have been dried in the, in the sun and they smell absolutely fantastic. And if I dry them inside in, the yeah. heater in a couple of months time, they're just going to smell like dry clothes. And I think yeah. there's that, that fundamental difference in the aromatics and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I know what I'd drink this with. This people, mm. my people, considering we're heading into hopefully a brittlely cold Melbourne winter. Um, yep. I'd be drinking this with a roaring fire. Yes. Um, curled up with um, a nice solid book. Um, mm. It needs to be a, a meaty book. Um, mm -hmm. I'm generally reading these days when I do read. Um, I'm the sort of sicko that has got my 14 year old reading Machiavelli or. Um, oh, no. Okay. Um, or, or Sun Tzu, um, so that when he takes over the planet, he's fully prepared to go doing it. But that's what I've been drinking this with. I've been pouring a large glass of this and sitting in the back in front of a raging fire. You can picture it. right? Mm. It's just a shitful Melbourne night, the hail <laughs> pattering against the window. You've got the roaring fire. You've, you've locked the wife and kids out of the room for at least a couple of hours, mm -hmm. and you've got your whiskey, mm. and you've got that great book, and it's a case of, oh, well, can just... Back off whilst you sit back and enjoy this whiskey. It is nice. And how much does it go for for a big bottle? How much again? How much do you retail this for? Oh, it's uh, two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Um, I want to just say a little bit about it. So it's it's not just one at the San Francisco Awards, but um, at the National Australian Titles last year. Firstly, at the um, Australian Distilled Spirit Awards. Uh, in Melbourne, which are the highest regarded awards in Australia, the only awards sponsored by the Australian Distillers Association. It was one of, there were 16 gold medals awarded across about 300 entries in the whiskey uh, section. And we won three of the 16 gold medals. We only put in four entries. So we won about 20% of the national gold medals. And this was one of them. Uh, it also won a gold medal at the Royal Australian Spirits Awards last year in Adelaide. So. And the other thing is that at the whiskey list shows around Australia last year, this was the most popular Australian whiskey of 2023. So Not I thought it would be... Not or anything. Sorry? Not that you're bragging or anything. Oh, well, I'm just saying, you know, both the judges and also the people out there, the fine whiskey drinkers of Australia, have recognised um, the quality of, of this whiskey. We do a lot of um, tasting events. I have people engage me to do you know, tastings at, at you know, birthdays and, you know, corporate events and so on. And I'll always take a, a vote at the end of the night, what's your favourite whiskey? And this one, more often than not, gets the nod. Um, people love it. Oh, I fully understand. Now, we 